Welcome to this edition of the Your Weekly Dose of Nonprofit Podcast, the podcast that delivers actionable items you can implement at your organization right away. I'm your host, Efrain Gopin of 1832 Communications. Today, I'm really happy to have with us Greg Lures. Greg, how are you doing today? I'm not doing too badly. Thanks for asking. Excellent. Let's introduce you to our listeners, watchers, and readers. Greg started out as a school teacher before retraining and moving into librarianship. He is passionate about engaging library users with services and developing their information literacy skills. He's previously worked at the Open University and his master's dissertation examines how health libraries in the UK use social media to engage their users. As part of his current role at Royal Holloway's Library in Surrey, England, he leads a small team which manages the library's Twitter and Instagram accounts. The accounts are run on three principles, be wholesome, be authentic, and have fun. I love all of those. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the face behind the logo, how brands can connect with their audience. Let's dive right in. Greg, how does posting on social media differ for an individual and a brand, in this case, a library? I think probably the biggest difference for me is that you're not posting for yourself in that... um, with your own personal accounts there's the temptation which you obviously you're allowed to indulge to be indulgent for your own points of view your own politics your own opinion your hot takes on particular issues where when you're doing um, a brand or an organization's account you're mindful that you're representing a cane institution but the people who work in there as well so with any of the kind of content we're writing whatever we're putting our social media it's it's not representative as me writing or any of my colleagues within the comms group. It's the library, the organization from our managing director down to the frontline customer service team. So what we try and do is rather than put across my opinion on things, it's the kind of ethos and values of the people within the organization as well. I think one of the ways that kind of actually manifests in how we write our content is You probably, if you ever look through our Twitter account, we don't ever use I as a singular. We don't ever say like, oh, I think or anything like that. We we use to probably use a British term, the royal we, in that we say we as in the library, the organization. And we kind of feel with that, that people are going to associate not with the person or the individual writing the content, but we hope with the service and the account and that kind of then values and ethos behind it. So, yeah. As much as like um, you'd perhaps be one to put across some of your own personal opinions in it, it's being mindful that the difference is you are representing a cohort of people and the values that they represent rather than your own. You're not writing for yourself. That's a fantastic answer. So given that, do you feel greater pressure or responsibility because you are the face behind the logo and you pre- represent a prestigious institution? It's an interesting one because I've perhaps not overly thought about the idea of um, the individual or the face behind the logo. And I think we're, we're lucky with how we set up, with how we run our accounts. And this is where I've, I've got to give some very much due credit to some of my colleagues and team members that, yes, there's myself who oversees it. But we've, we're lucky that I've got um, Patrick Walker, a very good colleague and friend of mine who helps run the Twitter account. And we co-write a lot of the content. Uh, Claire Hunter, one of my other excellent colleagues, she manages our Instagram account. And what we actually do is we have an hourly meeting each week where I'd like to say it's structured, professional and organized, but actually we just bounce a lot of ideas off each other. We we are quite organized with planning content ahead that there's, yes, there's bits we do that's spontaneous, but a lot of it, we've got ideas and thoughts, themes and trends. We're, we're thinking already ahead to September and our next academic year and intake then. But I don't think I've ever felt necessarily a a pressure on me individually. I think there's a degree of pride knowing Royal Holloway and the institution that um, for anyone who has looked at our account or works for an institution that when you've got um, a rich history and for our own example, one of being of like women's education and what that's achieved through Royal Holloway and Bedford College, that um, there's a pride in being one of the people who gets to talk about that in a public platform that um, there's, histories that we're proud to share the stories we're proud to tell and even with the work that we're doing now there's the work that we're doing now under difficult challenging circumstances that we're proud and we want to tell people about and we want people to engage with so 
the idea that the idea of um, a face behind the the account i think there's many faces behind the account in that sense but it all comes together as in the account is the library that's who we represent and we, we're proud of what we do I, maybe a little bit of pressure is in we want to keep people being proud of it but i don't think a pressure is in or we must achieve something specific or attain something it's it's a pride in what we do because of the stories we get to tell i love that idea of taking pride in your work like that that's excellent um today's actionable item please share with us three tips and best practices in terms of preparing content for a brand that you hope will be engaging and elicit reactions from your followers? If, if I knew what the magic formula was to always, always get good levels of engagement, I would bottle it and sell it a premium, I think. Um, it's, it's a very good question. And there are three points. There are three points that I could share. There's probably many more. And I think the one kind of caveat I'll put to this is I, I can share tips that have worked for us. And I think for one of the things that I say is there isn't a set template that people can follow. There isn't a set rule. There's things that we've just found of for whatever reason clicked and worked for us. And I, and I think that kind of ties into actually one, one of the points I will share, but I'll start with my first point of thought of idea. And I think the first bit of advice I'll ever give if you're ever trying and aiming to write engaging content is you're not an island in the, for being one person to run a social media account or accounts is really, really difficult. It's a challenge. And some of the best content we've done has been collaborative. And so that's, that's probably my point. My first kind of tip or trick would be is develop your content collaboratively because everyone's going to bring a different perspective, a different view. Um, if you've looked at the sense of humor we use on our accounts that uh, – you can definitely see that uh, we've run it past a few people to we don't think we're comedians we don't think we're funny and we deliberately aim for bad humor as in we think that's more uniting than perhaps being divisive of trying too hard to be funny on something but first tip be collaborative bounce ideas share information with colleagues and develop it that way like we we've got our email and whatsapp groups where we'll just drop an idea in and there's a lot that's on our cutting room floor that didn't make it, but then there's a lot of good stuff that's gone out as well. Um, tip number two, then my second tip would probably be thinking about how you actually structure and write your tweets or posts or content like a Instagram's obviously a very visual media. And so whatever you're writing as the text, it needs a good relevant picture to kind of go along with it with twitter where you can kind of that is the text that does if i said like the heavy lifting with it and the engagement especially when we're trying to promote a service or something about ourselves we try and follow a little bit of a structure which we kind of call the the hook the message and the takeaway and the hook will be like a kind of it'll be like an opening sentence or phrase or something that could be quite derivative or only tangentially related to what we're actually talking about, but it hopefully makes people really go, oh, what are they on about? What's this library on about? What are they talking about? That we've got their interest. The message then is what we actually want them to know. And following from that, then, well, what do we want them to do with it? So the hook, the message, the takeaway, and it's, that's probably quite standard fare for writing any kind of marketing materials in that sense. But the challenge is condensing that into 260 characters, I think Twitter limits you to, or your Instagram post that you've got a picture that will cause people to click through to it. And it's, I think with one of the things we've kind of done with that structure of writing is the hook in particular, will try and subvert expectations sometimes, as in we're very aware people have perhaps have a stereotyped vision of what a library or a librarian is. And a lot of what we try and do with how we write our content with our hook is we, we turn that on its head where we can. Um, the last thing that I'll say, and this is kind of linking into what I was saying at the beginning, is um, if you're trying to write engaging content, one of the things that I'd always, for myself and our experience, recommend is that, is that you're, you're doing the account with a personality. And I'm not saying that's the personality of the individual writing. I think, I think there's the origins come from there but it evolves into something that then becomes the personality of the account. And in that sense, you, you're trying to write things that they're not too corporate, unless there's like certain messages that have to be, they're not robotic. There's this idea that there is 
a kind of voice that you can engage and interact with that it has opinions in our sense wholesome nice ones for for the most part that um it's something that people can kind of relate to and one of the ways we've tried to actually do this as, a, as like a tangible example i can give is with our account if you look through it over the past year you will see certain reoccurring jokes themes stories threads like we we have an ongoing story about geese in the library dinosaurs get referenced quite a lot of cardigan wearing librarians a, a kickstool menace the idea that kickstools are sentient in the library and causing a bit of mischief and also kind of just certain stock phrases that we use like if we've got an announcement we'll start with good news everyone if we're trying to tell someone some information we might use the I think it's a G.I. Joe phrase, and now, in, and, and now you know, oh, if I could get it right, um, knowing is half the battle, I think. Now you know and knowing is half the battle. You can tell I haven't watched that cartoon for a while, and anyone who hasn't watched it doesn't understand the reference either. But it's that kind of drip feeding, and we've been doing it for 12, 18 months of having these ongoing stories, these narratives, jokes, that we found then that people engage with they're interested to follow with we get comments as in like oh what have they been up to now they'll comment on other posters in what have the kick stools been behaving recently or what cardigans are you wearing today what's the knitwear today with the geese the whole kind of ongoing narrative with that is this idea that there was a rampaging geese in the library that may or may not have happened i can't confirm but this idea that there's this story that's happening that's live that's going on that whether people are in the library physically or engaging with us from anywhere in the world, that we're an active community. And the phrase that I'd use here is what we try and create is a digital community, this sense that there's something active, something happening. There's this story being told that people can engage with about our library, the people and the services there. I so I think that. that's my three tips. Okay, I love all of it. And we're actually gonna follow up on that last one about personality. Let's talk policies and rules. Are there guidelines about what you can and can't post? And do those guidelines include a brand persona, a personality, which dictates your online voice and outlines how you'll engage followers? So there's there's a couple of layers to this then in terms of in terms of like policies and strategies. There's obviously Royal Holloway Library. We we fit into the larger bracket of the Royal Holloway College University and the University of London. So there, there is in that sense, as with any institutions or organisations, you, you'll have a social media policy. It, it covers your, your obvious points of avoiding your particular isms. You're not looking to upset anyone that um, especially for us that we are the library at Royal Holloway, we are representative of the views of the college as well. So we're not kind of breaking away from those values and, and their ethos. That's kind of standard fare in many organizations. What's kind of unique to us then is that we, or not unique to us actually, sorry, but what is unique to us is the content within it as in our strategy document. And there are a kind of few hard and fast rules in there, but I'd say a good half of it is what I describe as like the pirate code. It's, it's more of a set of guidelines than fixed <laughs> rules kind of thing. And so, with a few kind of set rules, and this this is kind of an interesting one, which um, there's specific, not specific to us, but there's some definite other accounts that are very successful that don't follow this rule. Is in we don't use generic gifs, we don't use any kind of stock generic images from free image websites. Any videos, any photos, pretty much anything you see that's on our feed is going to be a photograph or video that we have taken and we have created and is 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 of our services or about our services so like my background picture now of the library if you look through our feed you will see it's not a generic photo of a faceless student sitting in any library anywhere it will be a student from royal holloway sitting in our library with one of the excellent views that we have and so one of our kind of rules is that if we're showing images they are of us we want people to relate to that we want it to be unique content to us that's Another, extremely smart. Thank you. <laughs> smart, smart in our social media content and not always words that go hand in hand because the humor, but uh, I'll take sure. it. I'll take a compliment. <laughs> but um, kind of one of the other kind of rules that we have around, around it as well is the humor that we use. And this is where it's an interesting one. It, 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 
it kind of called a couple of things. We either call it like the, the cracker joke principle or dad jokes in that um, if I don't know how much kind of Christmas crackers are a universal thing that everyone will understand, but at Christmas you'll open a cracker and there's always a joke in it that is awful. <laughs> it is bad. And the whole idea of it or the principle I understand is that you read it out, everyone groans and they agree that it's bad and it is uniting in that sense rather than something that tries to be funny and some people might go, well, I don't find that funny. Right. It's actually easier to write something that everyone just goes, oh, oh, that's that's bad. And so if you look at our humour, it's quite deliberate. And one of our kind of personality rules is, well, our humour is, it's going to be puns. It's going to be bad jokes, plays on words, or almost the kind of looking down the camera, breaking the fourth wall, nod and wink of, yeah, that's... And it leans into this stereotype of we're librarians. People perhaps don't expect us to be funny and self-aware of the humour as well. Um, talking about the kind of personality as well, like um, as you said at the beginning, like uh, wholesome, authentic and have fun. Like um, with so much of our content, when we're writing it, coming up with it and posting, we ask ourselves, is it wholesome? Is it promoting a positive message that you will find examples where we, we're occasionally... Um, if I say sassy, I think that's a kind of nicer way of saying it. Our, our humour can be a little bit sassy. And when it is, it's usually at our own expense. We don't want it at the expense of our followers or anyone else. But for the most part, we want positive messaging. We want upbeat messaging. Yes, we want to be authentic and honest with it. But we want people to think that this is, this is fun. It's something they want to engage with and go with it. So again, one of our kind of personality rules or personas is, is it wholesome? Is it a positive message? Is this giving people a good impression of us, the library and our services. So the rest, I think, are kind of guidelines that will come into as in rough things, as in you kind of come up with things as it goes. I know one of the things we're trying to do at the moment is be a little bit more mimetic with our humour, as in um, cause one of the examples I say actually of an account that does use GIFs really well as the Sparknotes account, who uh, use a lot of mimet mimetic humour, like pop culture references or talking about books, and they'll use a generic gift to play off it. And they do very, very well on that. I'm, whoever does that account, I'm, I'm in awe of them and their sense of humour. It very much ticks a lot of my boxes. But I think at the end of the day, they're saying this, this, this might apply to most institutions or brands, but like um, for one of our audiences, we, we're a library. So we, we stay in our lane in that sense. We want to talk about library books. We want to talk about library services. We want to talk about librarians. And we can then talk about certain issues around um, race and intersectionality, social justice, LGBTQ issues through the resources that we have. We're not offering our opinion on it. We're offering the resources that we have on it that people can explore these topics for themselves. So I think that's probably one of our rules as well, that we, we're not getting political. We're not getting opinionated in that. And we're sharing the resources for people to have an informed opinion on those topics for themselves. I, I think we prob heavily tweeted once like um, warning, visiting the library may result in having an informed opinion. <laughs> Which that probably edges into the slightly sassy end of the humor, uh -huh. but the, the positive message of come and, see our, come and see our resources, whether online or in the books, but that idea that they're engaging and they're making up their own minds on certain issues and topics as well. All right. Well, you, you know, you discussed a little bit about being funny. Let me follow up on that. I've used Royal Holloway numerous times as a great example of a brand and institutional account, which is smart, engaging, creative, funny, and keeps me coming back for more. I think you've touched on this, but I'll ask, go a little, a little bit deeper on this. Does that come naturally for the people running the account? And if not, what's the secret sauce in creating that content that you're producing? First of all, thank you. That's it's a very kind compliment to say. So I'll, I'll, again, I'll take that. And I, 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 writing social media content is there's for us. It it's an element of hard work, but it's working on what we can do and do well. I don't know if that quite works in a sense, but we've, we've, we've found a type of humor that seems to click. We found a kind of tone of voice that seems to click. And, and I kind of alluded to earlier that the, the origins of that, and I think with any good account, are in the people who write it. Because one of the things we said is like, we want the account to be authentic. And yes, the personality of the account is representative of the library, 
but it's got to come from somewhere. And so we can't say it's like any one person, like it's, it's not entirely me. It's not entirely my colleague, Patrick. It's not entirely my colleague, Claire. It's an amalgamation of picking out the bits from the different people that have worked, seem to have chimed, seem to have clicked. And so in that sense, there's an element of, okay, it's not easy, but there's a natural intuition from those people of what we've picked and chosen from it to do the certain uh, content. But if there was a secret source, again, if I knew what it was, I'd bottle it and sell it at a premium. But I think there's certain little tips and tricks we found ourselves that have just worked with this. Like if I speak for myself, one of the things I do is if, if I'm watching TV, I'm watching a film, I'm having a conversation with friends and every now and again, you'll, you'll pick up like a little phrase or a way of saying things or a joke or something. You think, Oh, I quite like that. Oh, how can I take that or use it? And so I've got on my phone, like a digital notepad with probably over a hundred kind of just scribbled ideas that I've put down that, may never make it to the kind of Twitter or Instagram feeds, but we've kind of got there that we'll bring to the meetings, we'll discuss and go through. And I think as well, like it, I've got to be honest and say, like if we say like, oh, the, the account's done well, I think for the bubble and the type of account we are, we've, we've got a good level of engagement. There's a lot that hasn't worked as well. And we've, we've learned from our mistakes of what didn't work. There's so much that for anyone who runs a social media account, there's times where you think this is going to be great. This is people are going to love this. And you put it out there and it goes nowhere. And you're like, oh, then there's other times you'll just kind of spontaneously throw something out, you know, fill it, fill this afternoon with a quick offhand comment. And that just chimes for some reason. And that just goes and runs like um, we've started one. If I give an example of what I mean by that, of how that's happened with this, and this is where for other people running different accounts to think, oh, OK, well, how is it you start running and building something that has this engagement as in we we did kind of like a, a funny take on the book peter pan where we said actually the book peter pan's about a man child who recruits a child army he's cut off the hand of the one man brave enough to stand up to him being captain hook and he's got an addiction to fairy dust to make him fly and we thought oh that's quite funny we're, we're making a joke about peter pan in a light-hearted way but the idea being, oh we've got peter pan actually in the library if you want to read it for yourself that kind of chimed with people for some reason so now we've got this kind of series of uh, ongoing tweets and jokes now just off that offhand tweet as in well we'll do like um, a funny take on a book and the punchline now is and we got kicked out of our book club kind of thing so we did one recently as in um apparently saying that the Iliad is about a Mediterranean ancient Mediterranean lads cruise where a bunch of warriors fight over a woman will get you kicked out of your book club <laughs> classics Twitter as the bubble that that is so all of your classicists that's picked that up and for a small library account in Egham Surrey that's gone up to nearly 700 likes for us which for us that's good numbers for a, for a small library in Egg, I'm sorry. So it's just something that's naturally grown out of that, that we've hit into something, we've ran with it, and we've got an idea that we can now drip feed over the next six months as an ongoing narrative from it. I wish I could say we had a source, that we planned it, we bottled it. Sometimes it just comes from something spontaneous and we run with it. That's awesome. Um, so you had mentioned a little bit earlier something I really liked about using authentic and original images. Now, let's talk for a second, use of images and videos. Royal Holloway is very creative with how you use, utilize video and pictures to engage the audience. How important is, uh, you know, pictures and video to your overall content strategy? It is important, like as, as I kind of alluded to earlier, it's, it's probably one of our, our set rules within our kind of strategy document as in, and this all ties into this layers of what I've used the phrase before, digital community. And we've, we're very conscious. And this is where I think social media, the strengths of it, like for, for whatever kind of criticism you can lay at social media and the kind of the negative aspects of it, there are some really positive stories and things that you can do with it as well. And for building engagement, building understanding, having meaningful conversations. And for us, it was the idea that we're building a a nice supportive again i'll use the word wholesome digital community and the images and the videos that we include with that then are really important to it because like i said we don't want the association to be with the individual writing account we don't want people to just go oh it's just a generic image that could be from anywhere 
we want to use photos that are of our building, of our so that they're nice photos as well. We're very, very lucky that our library building and the campus is very photogenic. We we're very lucky with that, and so we lean into it in that sense because we want people to have that association with the videos as well. Like there's a, there's a number of different ones we've used, and this is where I think there's an example of like mimetic humor that we've used. That there used to be a meme, like um, it was a step by step instruction of how to draw an owl originally. And it was step one, draw two oval, step two, draw a beak, step three, draw the rest of the owl. So we kind of took that where we had a sketch then of the library of draw one box, draw another box, draw the rest of the library kind of thing, as in we you skipped all the important details. But the idea, again, being that there's this bit of a sense of humour, subverting the humour that perhaps people might expect of librarians, but again, link it to something specific about the library. That's the library building in association with that. Um, another video that we did was actually like ambient library sounds that we did where we had just nice photos of the library building internally scrolling across where we then had like pages turning, paper rustling, keyboard going. And for anyone who did actually listen to the end of the video, there was a goose honking away at the end and someone sighs and then goes, not again, which kind of layered then into one of our other ongoing stories of this idea that was some sort of goose based scenario that happened in the library at some point. So it's, it is an important part of it. It's something we are conscious about with our strategy and we are deliberate about with what we present on our feeds. Okay. And for those of you who happen to be watching this, if you notice me laughing or smiling, it's because I remember what he's referencing and I remember laughing and smiling when I saw it. So, you know, Greg is, is absolutely just, he's hundred percent right. It makes the audience smile, laugh, connect. It's great. I love it. Uh, Greg, last question for you. How do you deal with negative comments or negative responses? It's a very good question. And in the sense of we're very, very lucky that we don't usually get people who are mad at the library <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> that um, there's the, the Twitter feed for um, Yorkshire Tea, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Not the Twitter feed, but Yorkshire Tea in particular managed to upset a few people because of a certain politician who used it. And their kind of response was, you're shouting at T. We're lucky we've never kind of had that with the library that anyone's been shouting at the library. But having said that, we, we're always mindful that while we never aim to upset anyone, we never aim to offend anyone in that sense, there may be an instance where we put something out that someone takes some umbrage with. And we have in our strategy document then a kind of step-by-step -step thing of how we will approach it and how we'll deal with it. If it is what we would just call outright kind of trolling, hostility, bad language, something that's trying to elicit a negative response, it's in bad faith, we ignore it in that anything that we engage with, it's just adding fuel to the fire. And it's almost certainly someone who's engaging in bad faith where they've got an agenda behind it. So there's, you're not going to change hearts and minds in that respect. The other side of it is that if we know it is a member of staff or a student at Royal Holloway and they've asked a legitimate question about it, we will give them an honest and open response to it. And we will answer their question again, providing they're not being hostile swearing. And as I said, look, no one's sworn at the library yet in that sense, but just in case. The other kind of little level to it as well is that there may just be something where we we get our language wrong. We, we get it wrong. That, that's always a possibility. And so there's probably two ways of dealing with this. One is that you can delete the tweet and try and move past it. But actually what we've said we'll do is if we make a mistake that we sit back and realize on reflection, we got this wrong, then our actual policy as it's written at the moment, which we've not had to put into practice to see how it works yet. But we said, we'll leave the tweet up. We'll add a comment or comment to it, apologizing and taking ownership of that mistake because for us we want to be open we want to be authentic we want to be honest and if we do get it wrong and people point out and this is where we'd, we'd hope with our student body and our staff if we did get it wrong there's people who would call us out on it we apologize for it that you i think for us with social media if you're, if you're trying to show like an, an authentic personality to the account you own your successes but you own your mistakes as well and so our policy i do is we own the mistake, we apologize for it, and we show how we're moving then past it. So we've not had to put that into practice, thankfully, yet, but we do have that as an idea of approaching it if it ever were to occur. 
That's excellent. And I hope that everybody who's listening heard what Greg said, what is the most important thing there is they have a policy and it's laid out for them step-by-step step what to do. So they're not struggling to figure out what next when they're in a crisis, they know what they have to do as soon as something happens and they're ready to go. That is unbelievably important to avoid even more mishaps and or adding more fuel to an already largely burning fire. Uh, so yeah, that's excellent that you guys have that and you are, uh, you know, and you're ready to go just in case, but I'm glad to hear nothing yet. And let's hope that that continues that way. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for appearing on the podcast. I encourage everyone to follow Royal Holloway Library on Instagram and on Twitter. They're at R-H-U-L underscore library. And from them, you can really learn how pros manage a brand and institutional account. Greg, it was a pleasure learning from you today. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for inviting me on. A pleasure. Have a good day.